some new faces and then some uh, uh, not some new faces. Uh, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is uh, Lisa Burns. I'm the sergeant of the San Diego Police Department. I'm currently uh, in charge of the Administrative Services Division, uh, which entails crime prevention, personnel training, uh, and then some other activities that I'll get into in a little, little bit uh, in terms of our Teen Academy and our Citizens Academy. Uh, before we get into that, I want to introduce one of our newest members of the San Diego Police Department, and that's uh, Captain uh, Ed Tracy. Captain. Thank you. Uh, thank you all, first of all, for, uh, for coming, taking your uh, busy time to uh, join here as a, a community to talk about uh, crime issues or uh, police issues. Um, just a little bit about myself, i um, 43 years old and uh, have a family and just like you. Uh, I was born in Hong Kong and uh, immigrated to the United States back in the late 70s. Uh, mom brought three boys to uh, the city of Oakland where we landed and that's where I grew up. And growing up as a young man, uh, I saw crime, a lot of crime. I saw people get robbed, getting picked on and that really motivated me to becoming a police officer. And that's where I ultimately uh, landed as an Oakland policeman. I uh, actually started with the Bark Police Department back in 1990. I uh, spent a couple of years there and realized this is not really policing. I really want to do good policing. And Oakland at the time had a great reputation. Uh, we were the premier law enforcement agency in the region, and so I went there. I uh, spent 19 years there, did a variety of different assignments. I'm not going to bore you with that, with the, those details, but one of the biggest things that I really enjoyed doing was working with the community. Uh, so by the end of my career there, uh, I was known as the community policing captain. This is what I love to do. Uh, when I left Oakland, I had to say goodbye to some of my community uh, members. Uh, it brought literally tears to my eyes because, uh, you know, you just take ownership. And these are folks that you've worked with diligently and day after day to fight crime, to work on programs. And at the end, I felt like I was disappointing them. Uh, and one of the community members came up to, to me and said, it's okay. You've done your job here, now it's time for you to go impact folks in San Leandro. So uh, I want to say you know, thank you to all of you for the warm welcome, especially to, uh, to our staff here at the San Leandro Police Department. And enough about me, but so in the short time I've been here, in the last 45 days, uh, what I've been really impressed with is uh, you folks, this community. As I drive through the community, as I go to the restaurants to eat, I notice that people just simply take pride in this community. Uh, people take care of the yards, people who talk with the police, we're engaged, and I continue to keep that up. Right? Having been in this line of work, I see a community that makes a difference is when they work with the police and the police work with the community. Uh, before I go on further, what I'd like to do is introduce you to the rest of our A team, I call them, that's our staff. Of course you know uh, Luis Torres, our sergeant, he does everything at the police department. This guy puts in 10 plus hours every day uh, to make this organization better. So uh, that's uh, Sergeant Torres. Uh, we have Pam from our records. Pam, please stand up. Pam's been here for a number of years and uh, she's one of the great staff that you see and, and meet at the front counter. They take care of all our records, uh, you know, all the issues related to that. And she's the bright face that you get to see when you come up to. Uh, Talk to with us at the police department. We have Melissa from the dispatch center. So you have a pretty face and a pretty voice. And so when you call 911 or the 9 emergency, that's one of our awesome dispatchers that uh, do a bang up job with the very strong staff that they have. And I'll share a story with you later about yesterday incident of a robbery uh, at a bank, how our dispatcher and our officers did a, a fantastic job and of catching a, a uh, well-known felon in the area. Uh, we have uh, Sergeant Mattis uh, in the back, Bobby. Bobby and I have known each other for a long, long time, and uh, he's been a cop as long as I have, and uh, the, the tenure that I've known him, he's always been a fine professional, and it's, a, it's an honor to work with guys like that here at the San Leandro PD. We have uh, uh, Sergeant uh, Nguyen, one of your uh, patrol sergeants, and uh, these guys just, they keep the, sh the, the ship tight every day. We have um, Detective Hypes. Hypes, yes, uh, from our detective, and uh, what specific are you doing about? All crimes against persons, mainly robbery. 
And then uh, Officer Gillen just showed up, our one of our uh, bicycle patrol officers. He's one of the officers that caught the back out of this right? He looks, he looks fancy in his uh, bicycle outfit, but he's an effective crime fighter. So that's our, our staff. We're here to address any questions that you may have. Me being a new guy, I've only been here for 45 days. Uh, I don't know all the answers, but I certainly have brought the team that would uh, give you a, a clear picture of what's going on uh, and address any questions you have. So with that, I'd like to open up to any questions, concerns, comments. <laughs> Sir? Hi. Uh, yeah, uh, first off, I uh, just want to say I'm really happy to meet you and I'm, I'm grateful you're, you're here. And I'm wondering, are you replacing someone or in addition to the, to the force? Thank you. Thank you for the warm welcome, sir. Uh, so I took an existing uh, position, captain's position, that opened up when uh, Pete Luke uh, retired. So for the very first time, the San Leandro Police Department, under uh, leadership of Chief Spagnoli, decided to open up this position to outside to see what we can draw in. And I thank her, and I thank you for that. A um, couple of things. You know, as a chief coming in, you. There's obvious talent within this organization. I'll be here first to tell you. But timing sometimes is the key, isn't it? So uh, I was a captain for five years at Oakland, so it was really not a fair comparison when I was testing with uh, lieutenants that were trying to be captains. So I had a bit of an edge over. Not to say I'm better qualified over these guys, absolutely not. The chief wanted to bring in some fresh ideas, someone that's been strong with the community, someone that's worked with technology, uh, someone that's not afraid to hold others accountable. And so she puts out this grueling testing process. I saw the opening. This is a city I spent some time growing up in. What I didn't tell you was in fifth grade, I went to school, I lived here. Uh, I went to um, um, elementary near Beacon. I played for St. Felicitas. You know, I don't look like a basketball player, but I was. Um, so, so to, to have that opportunity to come back and serve was just, I couldn't resist. Uh, so here I am. One thing that I ask when you ask questions is, we, this is probably our, I don't even know how many coffee with cops. We see some of the same faces, but we don't know who you are. Uh, if you, when you ask a question, let us know who you are, because we're probably going to run into you again. Um, people that are in my Citizens Academy, I try to remember names and faces because I see them uh, years down the road. And, and doesn't want to remember you, so do us a favor uh, and just let us know who you are. Next question, sir. Uh, my name is Bill McCarthy. I'm retired of uh, Oakland Fireman. Uh, I talked to uh, Officer McManus when I came in here, and the problem we have is a house on our street which has uh, complications in it. Uh, with uh, I think there's a uh, governmental entity there, and uh, they've had I think it was uh, 41. Uh, calls by the police there since uh, 2006, and then we had the last one where they cordoned off uh, Deal Avenue, uh, Fortuna Avenue, and, and Superior. So what we're trying to do is find out what's going on, and I talked to uh, Sergeant McManus, and he says they're working on it right now. Right, Dave, you got something to say? I know Melissa knows me. I live at 575. Before uh, Sergeant uh, Bobby Mack comes up and speak on the specifics, I would say uh, don't be discouraged. Continue to call. That's what we're here for. Uh, don't ever feel like the little things don't matter. The little things do matter. Uh, people driving up with loud music, people speeding off in their vehicles, to the suspicious people hanging out. All those little things matter. 
right? Give us an opportunity to get out there. What happens is we get out there minimally, we speak with people, we identify individuals. When we identify individuals, we're building intelligence, right? Intelligence that will later on help us link cases together. So however minute you might think it is, uh, you're never a bother to this police department. We're here to serve you. So call us. Uh, if, there's, if there's issues with loud music, whatever, just call us. So at least give us the opportunity to get out there to at least investigate. Bobby, could you uh, address the uh, concerns? Yeah, I'll do the best that I can here. Uh, I work the patrol division now. Um, I used to work investigations until my voluntary transfer came out about a year ago after my specialized assignment time was up. Um, the House on Deal is, is kind of very near and dear to me because I have long-time relationships with the McCarthy family. I actually grew up with one of his sons being one of my best friends as a kid. Um, we had dealt with that house a couple of times in the past year or two. And I don't know whether or not it's uh, a Section 8 house right now. What I do know is that Officer Kovach, who works our crime-free multi-housing, She's in communication with uh, the county for Section 8, with the district attorney's office who's represented there, and is trying to find out who the owner is and is working in it from that angle. And I apologize that I don't have all the details for you today. Um, what I can kind of discuss is the incident probably about four months ago when the street was shut down. Okay. There were people that were at that house, or at least one person at that house that was accused of being involved in a crime in the city of Oakland. Yeah, the person was identified, the person was tracked to that house. Um, the person was wanted uh, by the Oakland Police Department uh, to be arrested for a crime. And one of our sergeants from the investigation division spotted the person outside that day. Um, it was a crime in which uh, necessitated uh, shutting down the neighborhood for everyone's safety uh, to apprehend and take that person into custody and turn them over to the Oakland Police Department. Um, my experience is there. I do know that there have been a lot of calls for service, and, and Bill, you mentioned 41. Um, and what I, I can piggyback on is say, please continue to call. Because those statistics uh, allow us to build a case of a public nuisance, or they allow us to go to the county and say, you may be a Section 8 house that rents to a needy family However, this is becoming a community nuisance because people do take care of their homes. People do take care of their neighborhood. 500 block of Deal Avenue is not a cheap neighborhood to live in when you purchase something. Um, and it's unfortunate that you folks are having to go through this right now. But if you continue to call, we can continue to identify people there. We can continue to run them for criminal history and do warrant checks and address those issues. And like I think it was mentioned beforehand, these things do take some time, especially when you're going through the different steps or the different processes to have people evicted or to have Section 8 uh, eligibility taken away, to have people evicted from homes or to relocate them and things of that nature. Um, so if you continue to call, we will continue to get the officers up there so that we can at least document what's going on. Sir, uh, one little update. Um, I talked to the folks at the house uh, about a week and a half or two weeks ago. Uh, I talked to a lady named Valerie who apparently is, is in charge of the house. And she asked me if I could get her some boxes because she said they were going to have to move. Um, which is okay. Um, uh, I guess our, our concern at this point is, okay, you get one group of people who may be, and, and I'm, I'm Dave Gallagher, and uh, we have several other folks on the street here. Um, we get one group of individuals who are involved in a variety of strange activity out, and then the landlord turns around, brings in somebody else, and we start all over again. And um, so, you know, uh, it seems like maybe the root of the problem is the situation with the landlord. And maybe the neighborhood, uh, maybe we'll just have to get together and see if we can find a good real estate attorney and tackle this from another angle. Um, because in, unless we can do something and, and put that house in a different situation, we're going to get one group of, of exciting individuals and the 
the next group comes in and we start over and then the next group and, and you know this will go on forever. Um, so anyhow, just for a way of where that's sort of what's going on there. Chandra, I've got the, just got an update from Officer Kovach on it. Uh, I don't know what the last update you received was regarding it. Uh, she said that she's been in contact with uh, a DA inspector from uh, the, or the uh, district attorney's office who deals with uh, some of the Section 8 uh, crimes that, that, that occur uh, related to it. Um, they're currently working on it right now. Um, and one of, the, uh, one of the things that come out of it is that they revoke uh, the Section 8 housing for that property. I uh, don't know if that's going to solve the problem or not, but it's, it's, it, it, yeah, it, it, it does, it, it, it's one step and we'll see if that's it, but uh, with the owner, if, if she's, she or he is, he, if he's writing to questionable people, um, that's not to say that, oh, sure. that that's going to solve the problem. The yeah, so it's, it's one step, but um, I'll give you my card if you okay. give me a call or shoot me an email. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll have Officer uh, Kovach follow up with you tomorrow or on uh, Wednesday or Thursday. She's been great, by the way. Hey, can me I ask her? Okay. Yes, I will say everybody's been really responsive. She, uh, she really wanted to be here. I think she's got strep throat, and we had to literally kick her out of the building. <laughs> like half an hour ago, I said, you got to get out of here. She couldn't talk, and she really wanted to be here. So good job on your part of being persistent. Carrie's on top of it. So what I will do is meet with Luis as well as her uh, when she gets back, is to talk about setting up a meeting with the landlord, putting them on notice. It's not good enough that you get a letter. You get to meet the captain of the uh, San Leandro Police Department. You get to meet my staff. But we're gonna have to some face time. Your neighborhood is frustrated. They want a peaceful neighborhood just like you do. You have a vested interest to keep your house clean, Pride free and as to the value of your home. These are your options. If you want to go down this road, we're going to have some issues. If you go down this road, we're going to have a great neighborhood. Yeah. A little heads up. Yep. Uh, the problem actually started with the landlord's son. Yeah, well, yeah his yeah. son Simon was, was the first one to start I get marketing it. illegal substances from the I get house. it. Yeah. And, and uh, he had a pot party one time when his folks went on vacation, decided it was a good time. And, and the San Diego there. police did come over and, and he was taken away and the folks came back and couldn't figure out what had happened to their little son. And I yeah. said, well, why don't you go talk to the San Leandro police? And they did, and by golly, yeah. they found it. And then, you know, there are other city entities that we can uh, work with to uh, do inspections. Other private entities, PG&E, to do inspections. And sometimes the law don't scare people but when we start hitting them in the pockets and they start getting bills for things, then they start thinking and evaluating their way of life. So we're not going to give up. You can't give up. Let's just keep working on this together and let's be relentless. All right? Captain Tracy, yes, I have a question about that. Yeah. So I'm just going to walk over here so we can get on the camera too. Um, in relation to this same problem that they're having on deal, <clears throat> I think this problem has occurred multiple times throughout the city. I live in the Broadmoor neighborhood. Um, we had a problem with people, if you recall, in the corner of Kenilworth and Dowling. And one of the issues that we're looking at is trying to help the city by writing um, a nuisance or helping to get together information to do a nuisance ordinance. You know, something so that it doesn't have to take years. You know, why is it that it takes so long? If we're calling 45 times, why is it taking years? What happens? What can we do to help make landlords or homeowners, you know, accountable for what's going on so that it isn't a multi-year process? I mean, what is it that makes it take this long, and what can we do to change that? Great question. Uh, I think there's probably a lot of things that can go on, and, and not to bore you with my history here at the department either or growing up in this town, but. I've seen changes. Uh, the house that you're speaking of right now at, at Kenilworth and Dowling was kind of a project for the crew that I worked uh, back about a year and a half ago. Um, we do have several city ordinances in place. Uh, we do have several different laws that can be enforced, but it takes people such as yourselves to come forward a lot of the time because the cop can't just drive down the street and say, wow, there's loud music, I can go arrest someone. A 
law prohibits us from doing that. The law allows us to say there's an abandoned vehicle in front of the house. We're going to mark it. We want to have it towed away, but we can't tow it unless it's been sitting here over 72 hours or greater. So it's little things such as that that takes you folks to call us and give us that information. But what snap. happens after, you know, 40 calls? What's the, what's the process that means that we have to keep making, you know, go up to 60 calls? It, it, it really depends upon what the issues are that we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. what, what's enforceable and what's not. If it's, if it's loud music at 10, 15 at night that's disturbing you, and you folks tell the patrol officer that comes to your house, really the only thing I want to do is to have the music stop. That's a call for service. And the officer may go knock on the front door, say, hi, I'm officer so-and-so, and we have neighbors complaining about your music being too loud. And the next question is, well, what neighbors call in to complain? And our officer's response is, not really sure because that person we called wouldn't give their name. Or, in the protection of that person so that they call again, we're not going to tell you that. You need to turn the music off. And then our hands are tied right there because the law prevents the police from making an arrest or something like that uh, for loud music. We have to have somebody who's actually a victim of that crime, who's willing to step forward, who's willing to sign the arrest complaint, who is willing to say, I want to place the person under arrest. That's a specific victim. Is yes. Okay. The, the other option for is uh, the council always wants to know what's going on in their district. So call, uh, call your council person. Let them know that this is going on because they may, uh, when it comes to ordinances, ultimately who passes an ordinance? It's, uh, it's the council. So they, uh, they want to hear about it as well. Just like we ask uh, for the community call up, community call us on certain issues, uh, the council wants to hear what's going on in the district as well. Yep. The, the other thing that we have now, we started recently, I'm sure you're all aware of it, you read it on the website, the, uh, the tip411.com, mm -hmm. where you can send an anonymous text message into the police department. Right. Every sergeant is, uh, has access to that system, it goes right to our email. When we log in, we get that information, and then we disseminate it out <coughs> to where it needs to go. So if you were to anonymously send this stuff in, we can investigate it, but sometimes only to a certain extent. Or maybe there's that house where there's that problem of the loud music or the people hanging out in the front, or it's that 576 deal, or whatever house in whatever neighborhood. We go knock on the door and they just don't answer. So it sounds like being anonymous is part of the problem if there's not a, a specific complaint that's being it registered be. by a... It can be. Um, and I can also say that sometimes people are a lot more comfortable calling in to be anonymous, hoping the cops can take it that extra step. Um, I know the dispatchers, when they get the calls, one of the questions is, can you please give us your name and telephone number, followed with, would you mind if an officer contacts you? And there are those crimes that say we must have must have a victim, and there's other crimes or other instances that we deal with that say that we can handle it on our own, such as like an abandoned vehicle, where the officer can do the investigation. So I, I just really encourage you folks to call. Sorry, before we get to call you, gentlemen, you in the hat back, you had a question earlier? Um, it's okay. Okay. Yes, sir. That happened to me, the property that I managed, what I did was, I do. I documented the violations. I complained direct to program supervisor. I'm pretty sure that guy is out of the program. Just documented either email, letter, keep complaining to the program supervisor, section 8. Pretty sure I'll be out of the program. They're scared. They're more scared of the supervisor than the police. Yes, yes they are. You mean the landlords? Or the tenants? For the tenants. Okay. For oh, you were the free. landlord. Okay. Well, they include the landlord if he's, the landlord is in care. But uh, maybe the tenant compared to the problem. <coughs> Usually it's on both services. And uh, ask them who is the provider of this tenant, give the name, the address, and then they'll tell you who. They'll communicate with you. Keep complaining, soon they'll be out of the problem. It happened. Good. All right. <coughs> um, I understand 
challenges with, with loud music, but from what I understand in hearing previous uh, uh, descriptions of what this problem is on deal, it's, it's not music, it's drugs. Yeah. Uh, and I would expect you to handle music and drugs in very different ways. Uh, and I would expect two years is a long time to have a drug dealer across the street from me or down the street from me or near a school or, or anywhere. Um, and I, I, could, I understand the challenges in dealing with the county on a Section 8, but uh, two years in dealing with a known drug issue is a little long. What, 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 when we talk about known drug issues, what are we actually talking about? Because to be quite honest with you, a car that drives up, somebody hangs out for 10 minutes, and it gets back in the car and drives away, suspected drug issue. But I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the known stuff is. 30 cars. 30 cars okay. every day <clears throat> on a regular basis. Okay. Last, last Sunday, somebody was blocking Marnie's driveway, <coughs> and uh, she, there was somebody else pulled up, and she asked the second person, oh, could you ask your friends if they could move their car out of my driveway? And the person she was speaking with responded, oh, I don't know anybody at that house. I'm just here to pick up drugs. <laughs> and uh, Marty called San Leandro. And uh, you folks came over and inspected a whole bunch of cars, and I have no idea what happened after that. Okay. Um, we're, with the with the address that you're speaking of, um, we'll we'll come back to that. Sure. Um, I definitely want to give other people an opportunity yeah, to, no, yeah, to to so if we can, uh, if any questions regarding that address, we can certainly talk about it after uh, yes, after talking with cops. But yeah, I definitely want to give other people an opportunity to to voice. Uh, before we go there, um, if I could just kind of give you a, a sense of the, the future of this organization and how it's going to impact this type of crime. Uh, the chief really wants, first of all, we are in the process uh, of tomorrow, going to start recruiting for a crime analyst. Crime analyst, that person is going to be able to grab all the crime data, including calls for service, drug calls, tip, hotlines, Put it all together and give us as an executive team, as a uh, leadership team, as investigators in this department uh, monthly reports on where the hot, hot spots are, right? So right now, the San Angeles Police Department, we have a good sense of who's who, what's going on. But are we being the most efficient that we can? Are we using the data that's available to us and someone putting it together, putting it up on maps, and figure out trends. And then from there, what we plan to do is have our staff meet our, with our supervisors and, and our, and our uh, drug teams and really be specific as to how we're going to address individual crimes. It's not okay to say this officer goes and takes a report, he drives by, well, where's the coordination? Where's the communication? Where's that relentless, be pride, this is my project, we're going to address it 24-7. And we're not just going to address it from a police perspective, but we're going to use district attorneys, other entities, other private entities, and really to get to the deep core issues with any of these crime issues, and get to the, those root issues and get rid of it. That's how you really, truly get rid of crime or any type of drug houses. It's not okay just to go drive by and say, hey, I stopped this person, I rode a car and got their information. That's not going to get a deterrent, right? You have to hit it from multiple angles, whether it's education, intervention, whether it is getting people evicted, whether it's well, working with the district attorney's office, whether it's finding these individuals with city ordinances. So that's, that's what we're looking at, being more strategic, using data, hiring private, private analysts to make us a more efficient police department. Uh, yeah. um, I was just wondering if you could give us some details from the robbery of the Fremont Bank the other day. Yesterday? How about our detective? Come on up. I want everybody to support. <laughs> everybody to support. Uh, Fremont Bank, yesterday an individual uh, approached the bank. Fremont Bank is one of these banks where you actually have to get buzzed in. So they take a look at you before you come in. 
and they buzz you in. Um, the same individual a few weeks ago paid a visit to uh, Citibank here in San Leandro and uh, successfully robbed it by passing a uh, demand note. And we already had an idea of who the person was because we've seen uh, some photos from previous bank robberies that he had done in the city of San Francisco. So once the description came out, photos were put out of this person, we had an idea it was going to be related to all these other robbers. So we took that information a few weeks ago and we distributed it to all the banks here in San Leandro throughout the East Bay. And they have meetings in the mornings with their employees and they show these photos and they discuss um, the potential of this person coming into their bank. So lo and behold, this same person decides to come back to San Leandro, which is a big mistake because we tend to catch a lot of our bank robbers, most of them. Um, and he comes in, gets buzzed in, and even before they were on high alert, they suspect he changed his wig a little bit, but they suspected he was he was the right guy. So they kind of gave him the benefit of the doubt, let him come into the bank. Um, once they figured out it was him, they pretty much uh, locked all their cash drawers, hit their alarm buttons, and called us. So the person leaves the bank with nothing, goes out into uh, the Washington Plaza area where all the information is put out to our patrol officers motors officers, bicycle officers, everyone responds, including the detectives, and they stop a person who matches the description. So it ends up being the, the right person. And we're able to link him not only to that robbery, but the previous robbery a few weeks ago at Citibank, and also two other robberies he committed in San Francisco. So there's no, no weapon use, simple demand note, nobody was injured on, on either side. So um, it was a very successful uh, investigation that cleared uh, four robbery cases and probably Probably many more once we put more information out to other counties. So. Very good. That's a great example of community, good communication. People staying alert, just like you folks, right? Taking appropriate action. And our dispatch, actually, there's one dis there were two dispatchers working, one's training, and one was taking a break. One of our dispatchers, she gets a call. Oh my goodness, this is a robbery in progress. Then she has to get on different channel and then dispatch it out. So this one person is typing out all this information, getting multiple calls, dispatch, getting all the information out to our patrol folks. As the detective said, everybody swarmed the area. Get the back end. I will tell you, coming from Oakland, that uh, I see the difference in the tenacity of the cops here. Oakland cops, some of the best cops I've ever worked with. These folks are, they take pride. This detective the other day, he was all frustrated because this other robbery suspect that got away from the Hayward PD and he, was, he takes it personal. But that's what you want. That's what this community wants. It's cops like that, that takes ownership, that they get pissed off when one of you guys are a victim of a crime. So that's a great case of good teamwork by everybody involved, including the bank, being on high alert, good communication, so kudos to, to the entire community on this one, right? Yeah. Next question. Yes, ma'am. I have two questions related to. You only get one. Two. Extra five dollars. <laughs> no, the first one is just very quick. Um, is our our houses that um, Section Eight houses more likely to be uh, places where drug activity takes place, or is it just as likely, you know, to not be Section Eight houses? Um, and then my second question is, you talked about the pro uh, how you're being proactive, uh, having, uh, hiring a crime analyst and so forth, but what are you doing to look at crime trends, not month to month, but you know, year to five years to ten years, so that we know to, how to, what to anticipate, you know, as San Leandro changes, as our demographic change, as our criminal issues, I imagine, will change. Now, how do we anticipate what they will be so we can address them before they actually happen? Uh, in terms of Section 8, you know, that's a, that's a tricky one, right? And all, at the end of the day, I think it all depends who the clients are. Some of your Section 8 uh, <laughs> residents are some of the best neighborhoods, right? It's how they're raised. It's, you know, are, are the father and mom at home to raise the kids and paying attention to what's going on? I grew up dirt poor, man. Mm -hmm. Uh, you could have called me Section 8. Mom worked two jobs and raised three boys. And coming from another country, I didn't speak a lick, lick of English. Uh, I grew up in East Oakland. So 
Um, you know, to, 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 to paint that picture of, you know, in Section 8, automatic dope dealers, I wouldn't say that, you know, so let's, let's be careful with that. And then in terms of um, crime, you're absolutely right. Not only do we look at crime from month to month, we do yearly comparisons, we do also a five-year comparison. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think numbers can be deceiving. It all depends on what's going on, natural trends and everything else. You know, every day the detectives, the officers, the motor officers out there, the dispatchers, talking with the community, this is what's most important because you get the, the pulse of what's going on right now. You know, the, the officers out on the beat, seeing the di different demographics, di different clientele's coming through. That's really where your bread and butter is in terms of feeling where the crime trend is going to be. And also talking to other agencies. Chief Spagnoli is big on us working with Oakland and Hayward and, and also reading on what's going on in the region, right? Because if you see certain type of, for example, iPhone Roberts, it was real big in Oakland. Then we started seeing it here. If we pay attention to neighboring cities, and see what their crime trends and talking to their detectives and I'm sure our guys do that staying on top of that then what we do like you said is how do we prevent it well we use that information and we push it out whether it's the Nixon system Facebook we want to push that type of information out to you so you get it in a timely manner so you can say hey there, this is happening in Oakland there's a natural tendency to come this way, so I need to pay attention when I'm walking the street, not on my iPhone and get it snatched. Or I'm at a restaurant and put it on the table and someone comes and grabs it. So that's how we can address that preventive piece, right? And so it's important for all of us to sign on things like Nexo. Does anyone know, not know what Nexo is? Nexo.com? N-I-X-L-E. Do you have a cell phone, ma'am? Do you have a cell phone, sir? No, Okay. So what in we general, can do, not necessarily with you, <laughs> just in general. If you don't have a cell phone, you have an um, email account. What we can do as you sign up, first of all, it's free. You sign up, go to nexo.com, and basically, if we see crime trends, maybe a, a vehicle that's wanted in a robbery, maybe there's a, a, a crime at a local bank, maybe there's an iPhone uh, theft trend, <laughs> we can go on there and we set up this uh, community alert. Missing child, mm -hmm. stolen vehicle, whatever it is, we send it straight to your phone. So you don't have to wait to go home to, to get on the internet, to go on our website, to, hey, let me figure out what's going on, or tomorrow picking up a paper, and that's too late. Next, so we send it right to your phone right now. So you could be at a grocery store and all of a sudden, oh, wow. And you look around, oh, that's the guy <laughs> that they're looking for. Let me go call the San Leandro Police Department, or let me be extra alert and going home tonight. I mean, that leveraging of technology is a beautiful thing. Something I use in Oakland, and I know we're using it here. And you know what? At the end of the day, it's as good as how many people sign on and use it. So if you don't have a phone, we can send it to your email and leave it there. But the most important thing is you get timely alerts. If there's a we big accident... we got to notice, too, stay in the house because the right. police were doing searching, you know, chasing a wanted criminal. Who is dangerous? And we may have we got that notice right at the time. We have a barricaded suspect, and we don't want you coming out and bringing your kids out. We want you to stay inside. We can send that out. Maybe a traffic accident, a big rig uh, flip over, and there's going to be a lot of traffic congestion in this area. We can send you that information as well. Yes, ma'am. N I X L E. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, my name is Lillian. I live in a second story apartment here in the neighborhood. The people who live below me um, smoke, I don't know if it's pot or hash or opium, but they smoke three times a day and when I've called dispatch, they gave me an action plan. Um, if I smell it during the day, I can call the non-emergency line. So my question is, um, if I keep a log of the smoking events and submit that to uh, Sergeant Anthony, is that, does that help in the investigation process or do I need to call dispatch every time and say, there's smoking, please send an officer? Yeah, so have we determined if it's a legal substance or they just smoke? Uh, it's not a legal substance, but I haven't had an officer to come out yet to get the whiff. 
Okay. Okay. It's okay. so gross, yeah. so yeah. pungent, so yeah. awful. Yeah. Um, so that's what I was working to. What can I do? How can I get someone who has the authority to identify what it is and then move forward from there? So if you report that someone may be uh, using illegal substance, we certainly have the right to go and investigate it. These officers are all experts, and as soon as they get that whiff that you're talking about, we know what's going on. Okay. Then the, our next question is, do you have a medical card? No, yes, whatever it is. Uh, your neighbors are being affected. Is there something you can do to not affect your neighbors? Or, I don't know what you're talking about, officer. I don't know what you're talking about, yet I can smell it. So now it gives us probable cause, and we can build it up. We can do a search warrant. We can eventually maybe get a court order to go inside the house and search for evidence and make arrests. So um, going back to your question is yes, make sure you call. Make sure the officer go out there, investigate it, and talk to the individuals. Keep in the log, it never hurts. It okay. never hurts. Okay? So okay, keep thanks. up the good work. Okay, and one more yes. question. Um, for domestic disputes, um, at what point do we call 911? If someone in the neighboring apartment is having a fight, what do we listen for? The thud against the wall, the hit, the yelling, what? I'm going to let uh, Sergeant Bobby back. <laughs> Who's an expert in this field? <laughs> well, I, I, I can tell you folks this. I mean, sometimes relationships go bad. <laughs> Families fight. Sometimes disagreements turn into arguments, and that's the end of it. You know, we have our differences. We make up. They can go on fun. Sometimes they turn really bad. And they turn very bad with very little. My hope is that you folks, when you hear the arguments getting way out of hand and calls, would much, much rather send two or three officers 7 o'clock in the morning or 7 o'clock at night or 10 o'clock at night. I'd rather send those officers down there to go in and have the people say, we're really sorry we disturbed our neighbors. We're having a disagreement about who's the best football team in the, in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Let's do this. Out and we're sorry. <laughs> but we'd much rather go there for that than to respond there with the fire department ambulances because somebody heard something, somebody waited, and it turned tragic. And not only with that, if, if you think you should call us, just call us. Uh, just kind of switching gears a little bit from a domestic disturbance, uh, a burglary. I don't know how many times that we've taken a burglary report and the officers talk to the neighbors. Well, you know, I mean, I did see somebody uh, carried a TV, but I mean, I didn't want to get involved. Well, if they would have called us, maybe we would have called them, maybe not. So if you think you should call us, just call us. Uh, it's our job to go out there. Don't don't think of it as if you're bothering us. It's, it's our job. We're going to get there. If there's something else going on in the city where we can't make it out there, uh, we will eventually. Uh, so just just call us. Don't ever think that you're that you're inconveniencing us. Uh, because again, it's, it's our job. And, and with that, we're all humans. We all have gut instincts. Cops are really no different than anybody else sitting in this room right now. We just have some special training. We have some different expectations by the public on what we're going to do for our jobs. If we drive around and we see something that just isn't right, or we hear something that just isn't right, a lot of times we have to go with our gut instinct. I ask you folks to do the same thing, and I can tell you, like Sergeant Torres just said, countless stories of talking to witnesses to crimes who said, I saw this, I should have called. And I'm thinking, had you called, we would have arrested that person like the bank robber yesterday. The one thing to piggyback on that, there was actually a lady who was going into the AT&T store next door to the uh, to Fremont Bank yesterday morning. She saw the robbery in progress. She went into the AT&T store and told them and told them to call the police because Fremont Bank was being robbed. So when we talk about community involvement, when we talk about you folks stepping up, we drive around in black and white cars and we ride a black and white motorcycle and we have this big glow around us that said, here comes the cops. 
What do the crooks do? They see from 14 miles away police, and they stop, or they hide. What they don't see is any one of you in your front room at 2 o'clock in the morning, he's been out through the window saying, okay, he's in a red and black sweatshirt, he's got blue yep. jeans on, he's wearing a baseball cap backwards, and he's got a mask over his face, and he just ducked down in the bush behind uh, the green car that's in the driveway directly across the street from my house. That's what catches me. That, folks, is what catches the crooks that try to take down this community. I'd like to put in a word for my neighborhood association and the Broadmoor, because we've had people who do call the police and do say things like that. And you know, we hear about how they're caught because people do call in. So he's not just speaking theoretical. It Every does day. happen. Every day. So I know we're going to try to wrap it up. Uh, Officer Albert's one of our uh, traffic officers. Just want to make sure you, uh, we introduce him. <coughs> As we wrap things up, I just want to cover a few things, and uh, I'm going to give it back to certain tourists. We're going to have uh, keep us uh, have an open house. Uh, so I don't think that's something we've done in recent history. So uh, she's tasked us to put together an event where we will uh, have balloons for the kids and food and. We want to invite all of you and your neighbors to come see our workplace, your police department, and come spend a little time with us and break bread with us and, and invite you in and take you on a tour and show you the, the rest of our A-team, okay? So that's coming up. So be on the lookout for that. We'll send out, next one we'll send out a newsletter. You'll hear about it. So that's coming up. Uh, make sure if you're on a Facebook user, like us, San Leandro, that's uh, going to be much more robust as we hire this crime analyst. Part of his or her duty will be to make sure we maximize our social media output to push that information out to our community so you stay alert. Um, and you know, this is a great turnout. Thank you for my first meeting to see this many great, pretty faces, handsome faces. Uh, <laughs> please bring more. Don't come out when there's big issues. Come out because we care about this community. Come out because we want to sustain San Leandro and keep this community safe. Being from Oakland, know how Hayward is, this is a good piece of island we're in, right? This is a good, good community we're in that's being sheltered from a lot of these issues that Oakland and Hayward are dealing with. It's not going to stay like that forever, folks. I'm telling you. Unless we continue to stay involved, keep coming to meetings like this, talk to each other about successful models from the Buck Broadmoor and other neighborhoods. Okay, so with that, I thank you for your time. Sergeant Torres. All right, we'll go one more question. Uh, Greg here. Thank you very much. You are my first meeting, Antonio Luis Guzman, Tony Guzman from the Ford Store of San Leandro here locally. You are from Hayward, and I, I agree with you entirely. Um, I have recently shared with the Chamber of Commerce and the Hispanic Business Alliance. So if you would please visit the San Leandro Chamber of Commerce website and go to the Hispanic Business Alliance. Our three focus points are public safety, uh, mentorship, and education. So if we can help you in any way with your public safety issues, please join us and join in. We're, we're looking for people who can join the chair. So if you want to get some real public safety issues out to help this fine city, uh, San Leandro Chamber of Commerce website, the Hispanic Business Alliance. We meet before Thursday of every month at 8.30 at various locations. Please join us. We can help make this fine city better. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and the captain stole a little bit of my thunder with the Facebook. One of the questions I ask at all the coffee of the cops is who here has a Facebook page? How about if you put your hands up like the San Leandro Police Department? <laughs> I saw one of you go back up. All right. Uh, we're gonna now ask how many of us look at our Facebook pages. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to push out a lot more stuff on it. One thing that we're looking at uh, also incorporate into our website or our Facebook page is to put uh, wanted, uh, wanted people on there as well. Uh, get it out there. Uh, so that's one thing that we're working on. Uh, the crime analyst position, it's uh, going to open up uh, tomorrow. Uh, it's usually open for about two and a half weeks, so please uh, uh, visit our website, uh, the Human Resources Department, for current job openings and apply uh, for the position. It's open to everybody. Uh, we're also looking at uh, several lateral police officers. Uh, we're going to actually have some more interviews tomorrow. Uh, and then Citizens Academy. 
I've got former students, I've got current students. Uh, we're wrapping up, graduating next week. And a couple weeks after that, uh, how many people have teenagers at home? How many people want to have their teenagers uh, get involved in uh, the Teen Academy? We have a Teen Academy starting on June 26th. It's open to those that uh, live in San Leandro, uh, have parents that work in San Leandro, go to school in San Leandro. It's a five week program. Officer Tim DeGrando, my partner, runs it, does a fantastic job. He gets into a little bit of exercise beforehand. Uh, they kind of do the same thing as the Citizens Academy, but a lot more hands on. As you know, teenagers need to be active, so we're not going to have them sit there uh, and just listen to us talk because I, mean, I get bored myself sometimes. Uh, so I can just imagine them. <laughs> But we have them go out with the SWAT team, kind of trained with the SWAT team. We have them do fingerprinting. Uh, last year we took them out to an A's game. Uh, this year, we're, unfortunately, the A's schedule isn't going to be conducive to our uh, uh, our schedule, so we're going to we're going to do some other event. I've got some information up here uh, for the Teen Academy. I got uh, brochure applications. I only brought uh, about ten of them, so if uh, everybody grabs them, they're also on our website as well. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming. Again, this is probably one of the largest ones I've seen in a while. Uh, definitely thank Jock from Mainlander uh, for giving us the space and giving us the, uh, the free drinks here. And uh, we'll, we'll stick around if anybody has questions for us afterwards. Again, thank you all for being here.